Well, after a tub of blue bell or two, I'm feeling better. So let's get this show on the road. Meh, fancy intro music. Cue the retro synth music. So I was kicking around ideas on how I can make the Mac SE's screen beveled like the original Macintosh SE. So I played around with the idea of possibly taking gel alginate and making a cast mold of the original CRT. And then after that, I was planning on putting in a resin just to replace the screen and stick the LCD right behind it. Um, this time, it didn't go out that great. I should be using a cast material, not a molded material. So that's where I went wrong. The issue at hand was the gel alginate mold started shrinking as it started drying. The resin started seeping out over the sides as the gel alginate started shrinking. And that shit's everywhere. That was a bit of a mess. Clean up. Although the gel alginate uh, issue was a bit of a failure, uh, the teardown of Macintosh SC and the mold for the mold building for the CRT screen. Holy shit, if you're not worried about me, I am. Did I have a seizure there? The hell? It was not. It worked like a charm, it was great. I'm just gonna have to use a silicone molding next time. So keep watching, you'll be able to see the whole breakdown of the computer and the build of the little tower to make sure that you don't break the vacuum on the back of the CRT just in case you want to sell it. Alrighty, so here we are at the breakdown of the Macintosh SE. There are four screws in the back of the computer itself. You slide it away, the front from the back. Uh, make sure you ground your screwdriver before you pop the suction cup in the back and also sit right on the metal part underneath the suction cup for a while. Here's where your vacuum is on your computer. Uh, you do not want to bump that. Don't bump that. You'll hear a and your vacuum is no good. Alright, I cleaned off the screen. And then it looks like I measured out the computer screen. It was 10 inches by 8 inches roughly of what I wanted to cut. I traced around the screen. Wow, I'm really thinking about that one. Come on, Anthony. You're so slow. And then I cut out the screen. Hey, we're getting somewhere with this. Pressed it out. And then I pressed it right on. As you can see, you probably don't need all this narration. I'm just gonna shut up for a minute. Alright, and then we're gluing, it's pretty self-explanatory, gluing on all four sides. Let's just skip through some of this stuff, come on. And then I place the CRT mounted on the foam right on to the other foam, I don't know. And then I hot glued an inch rim all the way around so that I had a place to put the gel alginate so that I didn't like leak all well, everywhere. You know, good molding practice. And then I sealed up the sides of the CRT and all the creases of the mold mold itself. Alrighty, and then I weighed out I think 7.75 or 8.75 ounces of the gel alginate, it will say in a second, 8.8, uh, .8, so 8.75 pretty much. And then I added in five cups of water, started around with my hands, and then poured it right on top of the screen like that, and I had just enough to cover the screen and go up about 75% of that inch. It's three quarters. Thank you.
Once it dried about 10 minutes later, I cut out around the top of the molding, press all of that down. I wanted to be careful with it so that I didn't mess up my mold just in case I needed to redo all of it again. And it looked like it came out pretty great. I was pretty happy with that, actually. Um, it was pretty smooth. Everything looked pretty great. <gasps> I'm calling bullshit. It was a bit lumpy. I was getting ready to pour the resin in. So I measured out about uh, four cups total of resin, part A and part B. So I did two cups, part A, and then two cups, part B. I wasn't sure. I, I knew that was gonna be way too much, which I, I could have gotten away with maybe three cups. Um, but I mixed it around and I noticed there was a lot of bubbles in it. So I ended up letting it sit for quite a while. Um, I would say I let it sit for about 10, 15 minutes. There were still bubbles in it, but then I looked up online a bunch of different ways to get rid of those bubbles, which um, turned out pretty great. I ended up taking a blowtorch to the top of it as soon as I poured it all out. So here I am letting it sit. Uh, and then it still had some bubbles in it, but I was pretty confident I'd be able to get them out with a blow blowtorch. So I slowly poured it into the mold itself. At this point, it was starting to look great. And then the thought hit me. Holy crap, I've got cats. I've got two cats, they're crazy. They're going to go and lick this. They lick everything, they go crazy. So uh, after that, I started to notice that it started pouring out everywhere, a little bit, oozing out little by little. So I was like, oh man, the alginate's shrinking. Um, so I ended up just cleaning it up and wrapping up for the day. Uh, tomorrow I'm gonna go back to Joanne's, like I said, and I'm gonna get casting material so that it, it's pretty much part plaster and it holds its shape pretty well. So we'll see what happens tomorrow. Hopefully I get a shiny screen. If not, I'm sure I can polish it right down. When it comes to the 1987 Dodge Charger, I've got a couple of projects going. One of them is making different cassettes that fit in my car of course but of brand new albums that just came out for example i've got this one willow smith one the link's down in the description if you want to learn how to make those it's an instructable but uh for my car i want to build a cassette holder for it so what i've done is i went down to the dollar store and i picked up two of these boxes to play around with i measured out not measured out, I really just shoved cardboard in here until it fit like this, as you can see. And uh, even on um, on this side. So I could fit about seven in here, I think. Eight, I'm sorry, I could fit eight in here. Uh, so what I was planning on doing right after this, simple enough, was embroidering the Dodge logo in on some black canvas so that this can fit perfectly right on the side of it. It's gonna go right here. The logo is gonna go right here, but I'm gonna wrap the rest of this box in this black fabric. After I'm done with that, I have a nice paper because I was doing book binding for a while. I still do book binding every once in a while. I'm just taking a break because I got a little burnt out. After all of that, I'm going to uh, put book binding paper on the inside so it's nice. And then on the bottom, I'm gonna attach some Velcro to it. Should be pretty interesting. Thanks for continuing to watch. Every day I make progress. I'm gonna be posting videos. Well, if I'm not too tired to edit the videos. Uh, but every day I'm gonna be posting as much as I can. Uh, I'm not going to make it seem like these projects take a single day or something. I'm just gonna do what I feel is right with it, and I feel like I want to just do this in stages. Eventually, I'll make a one long video of each project so it's easier to follow. But for now, I'm just gonna keep posting. Thank you. Meh! Fancy intro music! <laughs>